We've had the European elections at the beginning of this week. The dust is settling a little. What do we know about the next European Parliament? Well, the big story of this election has been that the centre-right European People's Party and the centre-left Socialists and Democrats, uh, who have dominated European Parliament politics for the past decades, no longer have a majority to do so. So they're going to have to work with other political groups and parties to form a working coalition uh, across the Parliament. So there's a real opportunity here for other political parties and other political groups to step in here to form new coalitions with different priorities. Uh, the second story, I would say, is that the European Liberals and the European Greens had a very good election. They've made significant gains and they are now among the biggest groups in the Parliament. And there's an opportunity there for those groups to uh, play a greater role in the European Parliament stage and step up in that regard. Um, finally, on the other side of the House, uh, the widely anticipated, widely predicted um, anti-establishment surge did not actually materialise in the end. However, we are dealing with a greater cohort of Eurosceptic MEPs in this Parliament and those looking to form a broad working majority will have to bear that in mind when, when it comes to those decisions. Do you think there are enough people there who will act as a, as a block to anything the Commission proposes? I think it's, it's clear that a, a broad centrist block is going to be working more closely together in this European Parliament. And while the European People's Party is still the largest group uh, in the European Parliament, that political centre of gravity now leans left. Uh, and look at ALDE uh, and, and the Greens in particular. Um, they are the only pro-European parties that actually gained seats in this election and significant seats. They're going to want to play a greater role. And momentum is with those groups to step into the centre and play a greater role in that regard. To your, to your point about the Eurosceptics, the, the anti-Europeans, uh, they have uh, gained seats, absolutely. They are going to be a noisier bunch in this parliament, that's clear. But, um, and, and if they were to form a group themselves, one cohesive group, they'd be the third largest group in the parliament. But past performance has shown they have been unable to come together to form one group. And therefore their, their direct influence is going to be much more diluted. The heads of government met this week, two days after the elections, to discuss uh, who will have the main jobs, one of the most controversial posts is that of President of the European Commission and the so-called Spitzenkandidat process. Do you think, are you willing to <laughs> declare who you think will be the next Spitzenkandidat? The two front runners appear to be uh, Manfred Weber and Franz Timmermans, if the Parliament takes the lead. Do you think that, how do you think that will play out? It would be a brave person that would predict the outcome of that particular uh, political race. Uh, however, there are, as you say, a number of front runners. The important thing here is that um, it is part of a package. And as you said, it's, it's part of a package in terms of those top jobs, President of the European Commission, President of the European Council, the first the High Rep uh, for Foreign Affairs, etc. Also the President of the European Parliament. The fragmentation of the political groups makes that much more interesting this time around. What is clear there, there has been lots of, of talk of, of potential delay on those appointments. What is clear is that the European Parliament will, in the first week of July, elect its president and its vice president. The election of that Parliament president will have an impact and will influence the profile and colour of the other appointments for those other top jobs. So watch that very closely. I think it's going to be very interesting. The, the most important work of the European Parliament is done in its committees. The committees this time around are going to be much more fragmented because the membership of those committees depends on the size of the political groups. So we're expecting that the pace of policy making will actually slow down um, as coalitions are going to require cross-party engagement. There's going to be more people at the table, potentially two or three or four groups um, that will be making these decisions. Um, so watch this space.